Hi, this is Captain John McAlpin, the Sonar Angler. This video will talk about 2D sonar and when you might want to use the 83 kilohertz setting or the 200 kilohertz setting. First, we'll talk about how conventional sonar works. We'll talk about the measurement of kilohertz and why it matters and when you might want to use 83 versus 200 kilohertz, and when you might want to use both. We'll also talk about 2D sonar limitations. Sonar is an acronym for sound navigation and ranging. It uses a device called a transducer to transmit sound waves into the water and listen for echoes from those sound waves. A computer measures the elapsed time from the time the sound waves are sent to the time they are received and mathematically converts those to a range, which is not the same as depth, and I'll talk about that on a later slide. The results from those calculations are displayed graphically on a unit similar to the one you see on the right-hand side of this slide. Kilohertz is simply a term used for measuring frequency in cycle times. Uh, one kilohertz represents 1,000 cycles per second. In the case of 83 kilohertz setting, that means, very simply, that you're transmitting 83,000 cycles per second into the water. And at 200 kilohertz, you're transmitting 200,000 cycles per second into the water. Neither of those is within the range of a fish's hearing. Transducer manufacturers will commonly use these frequencies matched to the width of a sonar beam measured in degrees. An 83 kilohertz transducer normally will have a 60 degree cone angle and a 200 kilohertz transducer will have about a 20 degree cone angle. The lower the kilohertz rating, the more powerful the signal. If you note the diagram on the left of your screen, you can see that the 83 kilohertz beam is much wider than the 200 kilohertz beam. You can also notice that if you were in 30 feet of water, that would be the distance straight down from the transducer at the top of the cone to the bottom of the body of water at the bottom of the cone. Note that that's not the same as if you were at the outside edge of this cone which is actually 34.6 feet away from the, from the top of the transducer. I typically use 83 kilohertz, if, when I'm using 2D sonar, I use 83 kilohertz setting to search for fish because it examines a much larger water column than the 200 kilohertz setting. In fact, it looks at more than 10 times the amount of water. At 200 kilohertz, I can use that narrow beam to isolate the location of the fish. Although the 200 kilohertz setting examines less than a tenth of the water volume, it does it at higher resolution because of the faster cycle time. When I'm using 2D sonar, I typically try to use both frequencies at the same time. If your unit is capable of displaying both at the same time, I would encourage you to do that. If the fish appear on both the 83 kilohertz screen and the 200 kilohertz screen at the same time, the fish are directly under your transducer, making it very simple to determine where to present your bait or lure. If they appear on the 83 kilohertz screen and not 200 kilohertz, that means the fish are nearby but not directly under your boat. So, just how much water are we talking about? This table illustrates for a given depth of water and a particular type of transducer setting how much water you're looking at. So in this case, as an example, if you're in 30 feet of water and you're using an 83 kilohertz setting, your cone width at the bottom is 34.6 feet wide. If you're using the 200 kilohertz setting, it's 10.6 feet wide. So it's less than a third the width. However, that's not the same as a three-dimensional volume 
So when you calculate the actual volume of water at 83 kilohertz in 30 feet of water, you're looking at more than 70,000 gallons of water looking for fish. If you're using the 200 kilohertz setting, you're looking at almost 6,600 gallons of water. So you can see that the 83 kilohertz setting is looking at more than 10 times the amount of water. That can be pretty handy when you're trying to find fish. The most significant limitation is resolution with 2D sonar because it makes it very difficult to tell whether you're looking at a school, a tightly packed school of fish, or if you're looking at some type of cover. Uh, it can be difficult to discern the fish from the cover that they occupy, and it's not as definitive as to what you're looking at uh, as you might see with a linear scanning type sonar like down scan or side scan. So we've talked about how sonar works. We talked about kilohertz and why it matters why you should use 83 versus 200 kilohertz and when you might want to use both. And again, I would encourage you where possible to use both at the same time. We also touched on some limitations. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you'd like to see future content for other fishing technologies, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. I look forward to seeing you on the water. Take care everyone.